Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny, Hulu's original series, Wu-Tang, An American Saga, episode four, All I Got Is You. That's all coming up next. <laughs> It's Bunny. <laughs> the opening scene, we see the word then that's letting the audience know they're going back a couple of years. We see Bree, she's getting on the bus to go home and as she's getting on the bus, she has her backpack and she's reading a book and she sits in the back of the bus. Now when she sits at the back of the bus, there are some girls that are back there laughing and giggling. They're showing a lot of skin, short skirts and midriff tops and you have the young teenager boys trying to talk to her and he's like, yo, let me get that number. And she's like, I might give it to you, hmm, maybe, maybe not. And as he gets off the bus, she says, I might give you a little something, something at prom. You know what, here, let me give you my number. And the dude is like, for real? She's like, no. So she goes back to the back of the bus and she's talking loud, like, ooh, all the boys want me and they can't get enough of this. And her little friends are just egging her on. And Brie is trying to stay focused on her book. Now, the girl that's talking out loud Loud, she talks to Brie and turns to Brie and says, what? Am I talking too loud for you? Am I too ghetto for you? Well, let me tell you something. The back of the bus is for niggas. And if you can't stay in the back of the bus, then maybe you should keep reading your book and go somewhere else because the back of the bus is for niggas. And Brie looks at her and says, you know what? You should write about that. You are sure right about this. This area is for niggas. And you know what? While you sitting there giving all the boys what they want, doing what you do, you'll probably end up pregnant. Then he'll probably end up in jail. And you're going to be sitting at the back of this bus for the rest of your life. And the bus is cricket quiet. Okay very touching scene because she was letting her and everybody else around her know she was focused on school. She was not about that life of being promiscuous and being seen and being loud. And this was a scene I wanted to stand up and clap for because I'm one of those goody two shoes. Okay. I grew up doing what I was supposed to do. And the good girls always get ridiculed for being good. Very powerful scene. Brie gets home, she's such a little lady. She's getting home, she's cleaning up, she's starting to cook dinner, her brother wants some juice, she's telling, she's telling him not to spill it. She's just being so responsible and taking her mother's place while her mother is at work. We then see Dennis come by, of course he's a younger Dennis and he's looking for Bobby. Bobby isn't there. He gets settled and he's watching Brie take care of the house so well and being such a young woman so you can see that he's getting attracted to her but he has these looks like he's uncomfortable because this is his friend's sister and of course they're all young so he's really conflicted we see that divine comes home and he demands her hey cook me something hot to eat bring me something to drink make sure it's cold and she has no pullback from that she has taken the responsibility in making sure that the house stays together everybody's fed everything is clean and at the same time studying for school so she has no doubt in her mind that her role in helping her mother is something that she just has to do because nobody else will do it. This is still in the past and we see Divine and Dennis talking at the dinner table and he says, hey man, I'm through doing business with power. I need you to help me out and kind of fill in where I'm, I'm, I don't have that that help so I need you to step up man and help me in this in this dope game because I'm not messing with power anymore Dennis thinks about it really doesn't want to jump to it but he says okay man I'll help you out we then see Dennis of course this is present day Dennis and Bree they're in her bedroom you can tell that they've been you know messing around all day if you want to say that and 
then it says how long are we gonna do this you know how long are we gonna keep each other a secret we should just tell everybody we're together we should just tell everybody what's going on and Bree says you know what <laughs> That's stupid. Like, if my brother found out what was going on, oh, no, 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 no. No, we can't do that. We then see a scene where Bobby's mom goes to see Dennis, and she's telling him, I'm tired. I'm tired of driving miles and, and, and traveling miles to come see you in jail. I'm tired of paying this lawyer and we're not getting anything resolved. I'm tired of seeing you like this. I'm just tired. Are you gonna take the plea deal or not? And we see that Divine is, you could tell he's been away from sunlight because he's been in solitary confinement before the fight. He, he has darkness under his eyes. His hair is crazy. He looks thinner. And he tries to hold out on an answer and he says, all right, I'll take the deal. We see Bobby, he's dressed in a suit, trying to tie a tie, walking around town, looking at everybody dressed so professionally, and he can't figure out this tie. You can see the frustration on his face. He's having no luck looking for a job. He sees the older gentleman that he usually plays chess with, and he's telling the older gentleman, you know, I keep looking for a job, and I'm not having any success. I can't tie this tie, I look crazy, and I'm just really bummed out from losing this show. I'm really bummed out that we didn't win. All that hard work and, and me trying to do certain things, it's just not working. The older gentleman tells him to not get discouraged. S discouraged. You have setbacks and you have things happening in your life because you're only looking at the now you should always look at the ending result because if you stay consistent then something major and something big will happen because you have the goal in your brain that it will already happen so in other words don't set yourself up for defeat and you haven't even really started yet let that fail from that rap battle encourage you to do even better so keep going and bobby takes heed to what he's saying as the older gentleman is talking to him he notices that there's a lot of other young people who are selling weed to some wall street white guys there's no cops there's nobody asking them questions patting them down and they are really selling this weed and bobby has that look like it's a hustle mode idea that he's come up with he goes over to Dennis's house and Dennis is there and he's trying to, you know, feed his brothers and you could tell he's frustrated. The mother at the same time says the line to Dennis, you know, I'm sick of this, you know, she's sick of her handicapped kids. She's so frustrated and she literally walks out the room uh, just with just with anger. And Dennis tells the younger brothers, you know, it's OK. You know, she's just having a rough day. Don't listen to that. Bobby knocks on the door and he comes in and he tells him, hey man, I got this idea. We need to sell weed to get some more money. And Dennis is like, okay, that's a good idea, but you gotta have money to buy weed to sell weed. So what are you talking about? I could have thought of that, but we ain't had no money. So Bobby says, I got an idea of what we can do. They go back to the Statue of Liberty area where you could get tickets to see the Statue of Liberty. And they go to the counter and they ask the girl, hey, you know, we need some stuff that we can sell. What can you give us that's free and hooking us up? She says, I can't hook y'all up. Like, y'all already come in here. Y'all barely saying hi. Y'all already asking for stuff. And they're like, man, you know, we tried. It's whatever. You know, have a good day. We out of here. And then Dennis says, we ain't never going to get what we need to sell that weed. And the girl says, weed? Y'all trying to sell weed? <laughs> like, okay, I can help y'all. Because it, it was kind of this epiphany like, oh, you know, I could, I could do a little something for weed. But if it was that weight stuff that y'all was talking about earlier, I ain't going to be able to help you. So she gives them bags and bags of free film. You know, the film that you used to actually put in cameras that people used to pay big money to buy. So for, for promotional purposes, that specific business had promo film 
that they would give away a little at a time if you made purchases to see the Statue of Liberty. So they have the, the film and you see them start to hustle, Bobby and De Dennis, and they are selling this film to convenience stores. They're selling it back doors to certain film companies, uh, camera stores, any little side corner that wants film. And of course, they're upping up the price to make some profit. They're racking in the money and they're collecting the money all to get that weed. Business is good for them. They stacking up a lot of money. And now that they have a lot of money to get uh, the supply to sell some weed, they go to the supplier and they realize that the weed that they could get is in one bag. And Bobby is just like, wait a minute, is this all of it? And the supplier says, yeah, that's all the weed. He was like, hey man, that's not right. We got all this money and for what we buying, we just get this small amount? Like, clearly you swindling us. Like, where's the rest of it? And the guy says, no, 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 no. This is not, you know, just, you know, regular weed. This is stronger. So it's more of an impact when you smoke it. So you only need to sell a little bit of it. And Bobby and Dennis, they proceed to say, like, this is messed up. And as they're saying it's messed up, that supplier basically looks at one of his bodyguards like, is it going to be a problem? Like, basically, like, this all y'all getting. You going to keep arguing with me? They see that they are not equipped to take on these other people. So they say, okay, man, you know, it's whatever. We then cut to a flashback scene where it finally lets us know where a lot of the beef and a lot of the tension started. We have Dennis and Bree, they're on the corner talking and you can see their relationship. And then we see a flashback scene of Dennis and Divine at the dinner table, you know, at Bobby's house. And Dennis is just like, hey man, that man Divine, I mean, that man, uh, Power, he did you wrong. And, and, and anybody that disrespects you, disrespect me. Divine says, look, it's not that serious. We had a business agreement. He didn't want to do it. He fell back on it. It's business. It's nothing personal. We cut that tie. We cut that deal. It is what it is. I don't like him. He don't like me. But it's not that serious. And Divine says, you know what, Dennis? Don't touch him. Leave Power alone. Okay, Dennis agrees. Okay, I leave power alone. It is what it is. So then we see a scene where Dennis and Bree are talking on the corner, chatting it up, and he sees power down the street. And he goes into a denim store that sells different clothes and Tim's and all this other stuff. And as he's talking with Bree, he's doing a side eye looking at power going to this store. So Bree's bus is coming, and she's just like, well, I can catch the next bus. We can keep talking. It's 20 more minutes. He says, no, you go ahead and you get on that bus, and I'll see you later. She gets on the bus. He waits on power to leave the denim store. He sees power leave. He goes into the denim store. He's looking at who's in there, and there's only one lady at the counter. And he looks on the wall and he sees a picture of Power when he was a little younger, looked like he just graduated high school, the father and the lady that's at the counter. And the next thing we see is Dennis pull a mask down and he's robbing the register. He's saying, give me everything and don't just give me the stuff that's at the top. Give me the stuff that's at the bottom of the till. Give me all the money. He's robbing them. And then a guy comes from the back of the store and says, hey, what's going on? Dennis pulls a gun on him and says, just get down. Just shut up. And he's kicking him in the leg and the man falls down and he tells the woman to get on the ground he says be quiet shut up i'm taking this money don't know, nobody say nothing they're holding hands thinking they're about to die and get shot in the head like from a robber and before dennis leaves he says f your son your son ain't ish f your son and he breaks the picture that's on the wall and then he leaves Meanwhile, on the other side of the town, we have Shy and Power, who've been doing pretty good in business as well. Without Bobby and Divine and everybody else slanging them things on the other side of town, they are the main go-to. So they're getting all the fiend money, and they are wrapping up. And as they're sitting there talking in the red bins in a car, and, and he said, Power says to uh, Shy, you know, we've been doing really good, and you've really been putting in that work, man. You know, you you racking up the money. you doing what I tell you to do. And, you know, i just catch you later. And Power gets out the car, and Shaw's just like, 
well, well, where are you going? What are you doing? You leaving this car here? He was like, you do you, man. And Sha says, well, what does that mean? What you want me to do with the car? He was like, this yours, man. So he gifts him a red Benz, and Sha's just like, oh, dang, I got a car now. So he has the car. The next thing we see is Sha. He goes to Bobby's house, and, of course, Bobby has his headphones in, and he's making up and cooking up them beats, and he's just in his own zone. And Sha says, hey, man, why don't you take a break? Let's go in my car. And Bobby's like, well, what you, what you mean in your car? He was like jiggling the keys. Got a red Benz, let's go. Bobby says, man, that's great, but I'm trying to finish it, finish this beat while it's in my head, and I'm trying to stay focused. Sha is just shocked that, man, you that into the music that you don't want to go ride in this Benz? It shows the true dedication and his true love, which is music, and not even money, not even a new car, none of that takes him away from him focusing on his music. We are seeing the true dedication of Bobby and he could care less what everybody else is doing and whatever else is going on. And Sha notices that. He starts to go back up the steps to leave the basement and he's looking back at Bobby like, dang, like he for real, for real with this music. Bree's aunt Lori comes into town and she's already in her house when she arrives. She thinks her little brother has let in a stranger and before she can go off on her little brother, she realizes that it's her aunt. And they hug and they embrace one another and the aunt says, wow, college, huh? College is coming up. So that gives us an idea of how old Bree is because I'm like, wow, <laughs> I really was feeling uncomfortable for the past three episodes thinking how young is this girl that Dennis has been having sex with so clearly I was right in the other episode when I estimated that they were te all teenagers and Brie was probably maybe a year or two younger uh, from everybody else so uh, we see that her aunt Lori is very vibrant she's she does hair and makeup and she's practicing on the little brother and has a little wig on there and on him and trying to style it and telling him to be still and then we have her mother come in that sees her sister and they're having fun and they're embracing one another because you can tell from by the way that the house is decorated it's Christmas time and they're all trying to be around each other for the holidays. Dennis takes his two brothers to a local neighborhood child care facility and you know he got a little money now so he gives some money to the facilitator and to the person that is looking after the children and he says here here's a little something to make sure everybody has snacks and to make sure everybody has food when they come here and she's just like wow thank you Dennis that's just amazing and he's like I want everybody to have fun at the zoo so it's evident that the community Community center or the daycare is taking the local kids to the zoo and one of his handicapped brothers says we going to the zoo she's like yeah are you ready to go to the zoo are you are you ready to have fun and he says we already at the zoo <laughs> and they sure a laugh but it allows us to see that Dennis's brother who's handicapped and who has all of these circumstances he's he has a wonderful sense of humor and with the other episodes sorry about this hair with the other episodes uh, we have been able to see that despite his circumstances that brother um, continuously has a sense of humor and he's able to give everybody a good laugh a very touching scene. Dennis is at home. He's cleaned up the apartment. He has nice Christmas decorations. He's rearranged the furniture just a little bit since the brothers aren't there with their wheelchairs. So he's placed it in such a way where it looks like your average living room with the table in certain spots and the couch in certain spots. Because when somebody is disabled, you have to move those things so they can use their wheelchair so you see that now that the brothers aren't there and they're away getting ready to go to the zoo he's made the apartment look a little bit more relaxed his mother comes in we can tell she's tipsy and slurred her makeup is smudged hair all you know it's kind of wild you can tell she's been drinking for a while and dennis stops her as she comes into the door and she sees the change in the apartment and she says well dennis what's going on like 
you cleaned up and everything and you rearranged the furniture, well, you know, what are you doing? And he tells her, I know you've had a tough time and I know it's been rough. You haven't been feeling well, you've been stressed, but I'm here and I wanted you to relax when you came home and not think about the boys. And as a matter of fact, I got you a gift. He goes and he has a bag and he hands her the bag and she opens it up and we see that it's a box of Calgon. And he says, yeah, you know, I wanted you to have a nice bubble bath. It's just like the commercials. So uh, for those of you that are younger, Calgon, you know, at that time was like a major product. And they had these commercials that were for women that after a long day of work or just a stressful day, you could put the Calgon ba bubble bath and soother into a warm bath. And their slogan was, Calgon, take me away. And you would see the women in the tub and they would be taken away. Sometimes the flood, the, the tub would float or it would just show them in so much bliss in the tub so that's what he got her and she says wow you know out of everything i've done in my life when i see you i know that i've done something right in this world and he tells her i got the tub for you you know you enjoy your bath and we see how very sensitive and thoughtful dennis is that he put so much thought into it, into something he could do for his mother. And as a viewer, you can't help but to say, oh, that was, that was very sweet, Dennis. <laughs> we still have Bree, um, her mom and her Aunt Lori. They're in the living room and they're catching up. And Aunt Lori learns that Divine has taken a plea deal and she's telling her sister, you know, take it easy. I'm glad that your son will come home soon. And I also heard about that guy you was dating. He doesn't sound like he's too much of a good guy and you have a habit of picking some bad ones. And you know, the mom says, you know, I'll try. You know, it is what it is. He's a good guy. He's trying. And the sister was like, it's good if he's trying. You know, but when you actually see something get done, you might want to consider this guy that you're dating. And we don't know who this person is yet, but I'm sure that we'll learn this later. As they're talking, Bree, she comes around closer to the front of the house. And we have Bobby and Divine. They come in. And they say, well, hey, what y'all doing? They notice that they having girl time. You know, they even sharing a little two-step as they talk. And they say, look, we just having fun. We about to go get something to eat. Will y'all come? And they're like, no, nah, we're going to stay here. As Bobby and Dennis go up the stairs, everybody else is getting their jacket to go out of the door. And her Aunt Lori sees Bree and Dennis sharing a very sensual eye contact. Like, hey, ba hey baby, hey, boo. You know, but it's all in the eyes. But her aunt catches it. And when everybody leaves the room, she asks Bree, so... How long that been going on, okay? Because she's a grown woman and she ain't no fool. She figured it out. Now to one of the two very pivotal scenes for episode four, when the characters start to get the rattle in the brain of what's your next move. We have Bobby sitting with the older gentleman that he plays chess with and he's seeing all of the other black men selling weed, walking around, and then he sees white men in suits and briefcases and he's looking at nice cars. And Bobby says, you know, while I'm trying to get this town and go on job interviews, you know, I, I don't know what else I can do. Everybody else seems like they're so just successful. Meanwhile, we out here struggling. And the old man says, America, wants the black man to think that he is the pawn of this game called life. But the thing is, if you believe you're a pawn, you'll move like a pawn, you'll think like a pawn, and you'll accept it, that that's all you are. And America tells the white man, he's the king, therefore they think they're the rulers. They think they're the kings. But in actuality, the black man is not just the king. 
He's the God that moves all the pieces. I said, whoop. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, older man. You're preaching. It even had me say, okay. Think and move like, a, like the God that you are. You're not a piece. You're the player that's moving all the pieces. Now, I know it seems pretty simple to think that way. But what he was telling Bobby is that you're just setting yourself up for just this failure. You have time. You have health. You have that brain. You have all of this potential. And you are accepting the pawn defeat. The old man was letting him know there's something in you and I see it. You're doing other people's work. You're doing what you, what you think is right, but you're seeing all of these signs that you have this gift to be the gifted God that you are, to be the gifted man that you are destined to be. You keep hearing this music. You keep perfecting, and all you can think about all day is music. When you do all this other stuff, that's just a filler in your day. You could care less about what's going on on the block, what's going on with other people in their mess. All you think about is that. And in that moment, we see a very intense close-up of Bobby like it's lightning to his spine. That he has to stop running from this self-doubt that he can't be amazing with music very powerful scene. Bobby goes back home, so you know he's fired up. And there in the basement, you got Dennis in, Dennis in there, you got Big D, you know, uh, you got Russell in there. They all sitting there looking at some kung fu movies. And Bobby says, you know what? That line that they just said, that movie is very powerful. You know, we have to not just think about stuff, but we have to put it into action. And we actually got to start being real. And they thinking it's just the weed that got him bugging. But Bobby is really inspired he's still pumped up from earlier from what he heard about the older gentleman he gets up he starts playing the beat you know and and, and big g is just like i like that he start flowing russell get up he start flowing and, and they start loving the beat then we have dennis he just like you know not feeling it at the moment just rapping period or just being around him at all he says amen well, I'm about to go back home. Y'all keep doing what y'all doing. He's like, man, you don't want to, you know, spend some rhymes with us or writing. They all writing and excited. He was just like, well, well, no, not really, man. I'm about to catch y'all later. And he leaves and they kind of get a little discouraged and start to play around and slowly stop rhyming. And Bobby is just like, dang, like I had them, but they just stopped. And that's also letting us know that a side note, not everybody is going to be at your level of when you're ready to make big changes in your life. So don't, in other words, don't expect everybody to just jump on your bandwagon like I'm inspired. So everybody around me should be inspired because it might not be their season yet and it might not be their moment yet. So despite all of that, whatever you want to do, if nobody else is inspired, you have to stay inspired. And the tone of Bobby was disappointment when everybody else was amped up to do music. And because one person said, no, nah, I'm out, I don't want to do that right now, they all kind of followed the leader and stopped too. So Bobby is learning, I can't stop pausing myself for other people. Very important scene. Bobby goes home, you know, the house is quiet because the boys are gone. And or they're with the caretaker and he comes in and he can't find his mom. He's looking around for his mom. He sees the lights on, but he doesn't see her. He goes into the bathroom and sees liquor in a cup and a bottle sitting on the toilet. He opens up the door and he finds his mother passed out in the tub and incoherent. And he doesn't know what to think because she's unresponsive. He doesn't, he doesn't know if she's dead or not. He pulls her out of the tub and he's just slapping her face a little bit, shaking her, trying to wake her up. And she is having no reaction at all. 
The first person that Dennis calls is Bree. And when he calls Bree, her aunt is doing her hair in a new style and she's making her over and she looks amazing and she answers the phone and Dennis is just like, I need you to come and I need you to look after my brothers. I gotta go to the hospital. The ambulance has my mother, she's messed up and I need somebody to watch my brothers while I go to the hospital. And she, without any hesitation says, okay, I'll be there. And our aunt tells her, go ahead and do what you need to do for your man. Go ahead and head out. And as she's heading out, her mother comes in and she's like, well, Bree, where are you going? And her aunt says, oh, well, we are gonna go try this new lookout out in the street, you know, just to get some reaction. So her aunt is covering up the fact that she knows that her and Dennis have something going on. She doesn't want the mother to know where Bree is going. So she acts as if as aunt and, you know, uh, her spending some time together to cover out that she's on her way to Dennis's house. She gets to Dennis's house, and when she gets there, one of the brothers says, is my mother gonna die? And she says, no, 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 don't think that way. Let's just watch TV, everything's okay. Dennis leaves, and when he leaves, she's taking care of the two boys. We then see that it's morning, she's waking up, she's in the same clothes. Dennis comes there in the morning, and she tells Dennis, well, I had Miss Gloria come get the boys. It might have been too much. We don't know. But she calls Miss Gloria to come get the boys. And she says, is everything okay? And he says, yeah, everything's okay. Dennis tells Bree that, yeah, everything's okay, but she's going to be in the hospital for a while. The second, well, now that I think about it, there are three pivotal moments of this episode. So here's the second one. Then it says, you know, I save all the money to get the latest clothes and wearing all of this stuff. But we live here. We don't have anything. I don't have anything. And she says, well, you have me. And he laughs at it like, <laughs> and she says, is that a joke to you? He was like, Really? Like I said before, how long is this gonna go on? Like, we're keeping it a secret that we're even together. So that's out. I have nothing. He keeps saying, I don't have anything. He has nothing to his name. He doesn't have an education. He's in a situation always talking and always taking care of his brothers. And Bree says, we have each other. We have each other. No matter what happens, I'm going to be with you. And he says, well, what? What are we going to do? We're going to get married and have kids like Darius and Darren, which are the two handicapped younger brothers. Is that what we're going to have? And Bree says, if that's our life, yes. As long as I have you, everything will be okay. And then it says, <laughs> like, you have no idea. Like, he, look, he tells her, you think you know and you think you can handle this, but no. And he's giving her that tone to say, you may think you can handle this, but until you have to do this ish every day, you saying that you could live a life like this, but he's just so frustrated. Like you have no idea what this encompasses. And he gets upset and she's crying and he's on the verge of tears and he walks out. So we get to the third pivotal scene of the episode the third pivotal scene and the last scene of the episode dennis still in his rage and upset he walks back to the store that he robbed in a flashback scene so it's a couple of years ago he goes back to that denim store and i'm thinking is he gonna rob the place again like what is he doing he goes into the store Nobody's at the counter, but he sees the gentleman that works there. He's a little older, and he's putting items on shelves. And he said, hey, man, you know, how may I help you? Let me know if you need anything. And Dennis is just in thought. And he's looking around the store. And he says, no, I don't want anything, man. I'm just kind of looking around. And he sees a wheelchair that's closer towards the back of the store. And he says, oh, you know, my brother... 
you know, he's in one of those. And an older gentleman says, oh, you know, something happened, an injury? He says, nah, just this condition he has. And so the older man says, yeah, well, you know, I can understand that. He lifts up the pant leg and we see that it is, um, is it prosthetic? It's a prosthetic leg. And he says, I lost my leg, you know, in Vietnam. You know, I stepped on a stupid mine. But I had the life that a lot of my vets wish they had. I came back. I found love. I went to college. I even opened up this business. And I had a son. I had a beautiful son. And I never thought that I'd get to have that life. The only thing is that I was from the military, and I tried to raise my son with those same militant procedures. And all it did was push him away. So we get the note that his father being so strict and very militant with him is highly likely would push power because that's power's father pushed him to being the drug dealer that he was. And Dennis very instantly has the look of sadness and being very apologetic. And he's just standing there listening to this man's story. And he says, you know, and another thing, and the phone starts to ring. He says, you know, hold on, brother, don't leave. I'm going to go answer this phone. I'll be right with you. And as he goes to answer the phone, Dennis is standing there like, I robbed this man, and he's struggling, and he's just trying to take care of his family. And Dennis is just like, I can't do this. I cannot keep living like this. I got to do something better. He goes out of that store, and as the man gets off the phone, he's like, brother, what was you saying? Dennis already left the store. And as Dennis walks out of the store, when I tell you the walk that he was doing leaving the store, he had his moment. Bobby had his moment. Dennis had his. Just as I said earlier, everybody's inspiration and encouragement comes at different times. You may be amped up and ready to go and do something, and others around you may not be. That's why it's important that if you have a goal or something that you need to do, that is your personal journey. That is your personal challenge. And that was the end of the scene. But the writing and the acting, we knew Dennis was fed up. We knew Bobby was fed up. So I'm guessing in the episodes following that others will slowly start to be even more encouraged. The Jason death a.k.a. Jason, really made people not want to, you know, sell drugs anymore, so that pushed them into to trying different avenues of making money. Bobby and him getting that epiphany from hearing those words of him not wanting to be a pawn. Dennis with his family members, and they're eating oatmeal, and they can barely eat. He has the alcoholic mother. So, we're seeing the pieces of how everybody's life is evolving and they're recognizing their gifts because throughout these episodes, Bree has always inquired to Dennis, you have this big notebook full of rhymes and you used to be in the basement all day with Bobby making music. Why don't you do that anymore? Clearly, Dennis, over time, became discouraged as we all do. So it's good that in this Hulu series, we're building that emotional, wow, they not playing with this music. Wow, this music sounds so great because of the struggle to get to a certain point. Wonderful, wonderful episode. Whoever was the writer for episode four, kudos, very good job. Let me know what you think. I hope that going into season five because there's only 10 episodes you know in total i'm hoping that for next week we're on episode five so that will make us at the midway point i hope 
that we see more of everybody getting encouraged and starting to get into this music because I would love <laughs> for it to get to that point where we finally see everybody picking names, getting encouraged. So I think five, maybe episode five is showing us more why everybody wants going all in with the music and starts to get serious. Will the next episode show us how they get encouraged? Will they do a montage of everybody having an epiphany that this music, it, it, it's all of their gifts? Or will we have more uh, emotional dialogue and script to get us even closer to everybody else? Either way, I think it'd be really good. Uh, but they need to speed it up a little bit because I know I would prefer not for it to be rushed when we get to the music part. Let me know what you think. Comment below, tell me some ideas. How are you enjoying the series? Do you like it? Do you not like it? I think one of the main things that I'm having an issue with is that sometimes it's very popish, meaning it's not as rough and rugged as a script as I would want it to be. It seems some at sometimes uh, very um, made for TV-ish. But it's Hulu, it's original series, and it's not on HBO, so that's something totally different. Um, but maybe they made it a little lighter for a reason, um, because I don't think it's going to get any ruggeder or rough um, for this writing at all. Uh, it, it may, it may it change, it may not, I don't know. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore E. I love y'all. See you later.